Whoa! So we've all heard of 3D printers and being able to prototype and make stuff out of plastic. You know, a machine just printing it out for us. But what about food? The future is here. There is a 3D pancake printer that literally 3D prints your food. And now my buddy Jared here, and we're gonna build this together. All right, so this is everything inside of the box. I'm not exactly sure what everything does yet. This is the griddle where like the pancakes actually go on. I'm, I'm really surprised on how few pieces there are. I mean, this can't be that difficult, right? I know. I sure hope it's not that difficult. Knock on wood. And then this should rest right on top of this other side here, right? Okay, so right now we have the gantry in place. I'm gonna slide this down to the end, which is actually pretty interesting because it's got this little rubber belt drive right here and that's what's gonna control it. So if you've ever seen a 3D printer, it's got its different axes. And so right here, this belt is gonna bring it back and forth. And then this belt right here is gonna control the actual pancake mix itself and go left and right. That way, through the computations of the system, it can get pancake mix wherever we want it with whatever artwork we're gonna be printing at the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this all the way back. I'm gonna put this over here in the corner and then I'm gonna set the griddle into place. So obviously this is where your pancake mix is gonna go. And you see that there's a few different slots right here that's gonna identify your printing mode and your standby mode. So we wanna make sure that we have that in the right position and then that just drops in and then you can change your different modes here. And then this is your air tube and that just plugs in right there at the top. And then it'll print out the bottom. What's nice about the Pancake Bot is that it does come with an SD card and an SD card slot. So it's a little more high tech than the newest MacBook from Apple. So I think we're done, right? It's yep. built. It's all the way done. Five pieces went together really, really quick. Really impressed with that. That was a lot easier than I thought. Mm -hmm. So now we need some pancake mix, right? And then we'll get some designs and we'll print something. Okay, let's try it. the t-rex first you cool the t-rex yeah all right it says it's working something's moving okay we're in a bad spot <laughs> <laughs> there we go was it gonna start putting the t-rex on the edge what is going on all right that doesn't oh we freaking need this the air compressor hose oh no <laughs> <laughs> it's moving quick get it on there all right, is it working now? We are terrible pancake printers. It, the, the air pressure definitely makes a difference though, doesn't it? Yeah, it is coming out more. If this were on, it probably wouldn't leak, right? Maybe, because yeah, the suction, yeah. the suction would have kept it in. That's a leg, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I don't- Or is it the tail? <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't think our first print is a success. No, no, but that's on us. That's <laughs> not the printer. <laughs> I think it is a leg. Look, this was supposed to be a leg. If we had oh, this I set see. up right, look, this is a mouth right here. Here, I'm gonna turn this down because we might be burning it. So that's good to know. If it starts to burn too fast, then you can just turn down the heat. Like for the bigger designs, yeah. it take longer to print. So that'll be good. There's now it's filling fill. in. Oh, hey, we can dial in the air pressure. So it looks like we're on low pressure right now. I wonder if we dial this up. Oh yeah, look at it. To a four. Now it's actually like pouring Filling in. Filling it in, yeah. There we go. All right, so there's some, there's definitely some dialing in that you have to do to get the, the art just right. You can increase the air pressure. You can turn up and down the heat so it cooks slower. But yeah, see look, when the air pressure was low, it was so barely filling in. But now that we turned up the air pressure, it filled in solid. We just gave our dinosaur stripes is all we were really doing. <laughs> I see the potential though. Mm -hmm. I see potential in this thing. Yeah. Look at that tail. Do we got a tail? Uh 
That's <laughs> so weird. Um, I'm gonna let you try and flip this one. <laughs> okay, hand me a spatula. It almost looks like a dinosaur skeleton because yeah. we didn't have the pressure turned up all the way. Well, and that's what we were going for. Right? Yeah, skeleton. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. That's, yeah. So we have one dinosaur right here, um, slightly dilapidated. We're gonna see if we can make him a friend now that we kind of know how the system works. So we're gonna jump in here to the, so last time we did a T-Rex. I downloaded the Triceratops file, so let's try that one. Hitting play, now it's working. And we're not drizzling out this time, that's good, because we got the air hose in place. So this is our second attempt. We have our dinosaur buddy of Mr. Dead T-Rex over there. And it looks like, you know, I haven't flipped it yet, so it's still in one piece. But one thing I would change is that every time this goes back to rest in the corner, it drizzles out a little bit from the nozzle. So if Pancake Bot is watching this, I would put like some kind of spill catch on this very end thing. Because like as soon as the machine turns off, it's gonna start dripping out of that nozzle. Uh, ready? I'm ready. Whoa! Oh wow, that's not that bad. Dang, that actually looks pretty cool. Yeah, it does. So it looks like we had a little bit of spillage right here. Oop, ripped his tail off. As we were thinking that we had to turn down the heat for the horns because they were starting to curl a little yeah. bit. But it looks like we need a little more heat for the... The coloring. Yeah. All right, so now we are going on our third dinosaur. We're gonna reprint the T-Rex, see if we can get a little bit better than Skeletal over here. We've gotta redeem him, you know? <laughs> All right, I think we finally figured out the magic recipe for this. We have the consistency of the pancake batter to that about of eggnog. Maybe like a warm in and out milkshake. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good example too. All right. But it's working, it's filling in pretty well. The only problem is when we have the heat too high, like it starts to cook and curl up a little bit on the edges. So with the tail, sometimes with the feet, right now I have it turned on low. You can also see over here the horns are starting to lift up a little bit too. Whoa! <laughs> Look at that! Dang, that actually looks sweet. Look, it's got the eyes on there and everything. That's awesome! Woo! That's insane. It only took <laughs> four hours. <laughs> How many tries? The boneyard. We got at least like six different dinosaurs buried in here. Like sometimes it was too thick. Ah, oh, that was terrible. But we finally won. Look at that. It's the consistency of eggnog. That's what it is. We did a level four eggnog batter, and then it was like on like a low heat, so it wouldn't curl up on the edges. Mm -hmm. Victorious. So we finally got the design down. We finally got the settings where we want it to be, but this is someone else's design. So let's go ahead and try and make one of our own and see how that goes. You go to the website and get all kinds of different drawings and stuff. Like here we have a dog, here we have a Stegosaurus, a Teddy, an Easter Bunny. This is also where we got, you know, the Tyrannosaurus Rex that we've been doing. So you can download any one of these or go to the Pancake Bot program itself and you can draw whatever you want right there and it'll print that in pancake mix or we can import a picture by clicking here drop the logo in and then you can just kind of like trace around it wherever you want and color in so the logo has some pretty thin lines but hopefully it prints out pretty well i mean i've <laughs> drawn in most of the area like i'm missing a few gaps i wish there was more tools with this drawing program it's called the pancake printer but uh, you know we got to work with what we have you can do straight lines really well But I wish there was more like circle tools and stuff anyway file and export for printing and then I will save it to the SD card as EJ and it's exporting So I saved it as EJ and so we're gonna go to EJ and Then we'll hit play And now it's gonna make our design I'm anxious to see how it follows the pattern. You know, if it knows it's a circle or if it's just gonna like scribble in everywhere. Let's see how it turns out. I mean, this is already weird. Yeah, it looks like it's working out pretty well. 
Oh, remember, it's also, it's printing it backwards because it's going off of when we flip it. Mm -hmm. So the J is on the left and the E is on the right this time. Just getting that outer layer in. Yay! Nailed it! <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's not good for like super fine drawings, but like for kids artwork or for just normal artwork in general, I think it looks pretty cool. I do too. As far as 3D pancake printing, I think the future's definitely here. It was definitely fun to attempt for the first time. Once you get everything dialed in and you get like a good understanding of where your mix is, where your temperature is, and where the pressure is, I think you'll be able to have a lot of fun with it and you'll be able to create some pretty cool things. Huge thanks to Jared for letting us use his kitchen. I'll put a link for his channel here. He does a lot of family vlogs with his family. And I'll also include a link for this pancake bot in the description of this video as well. So take a look at that. It's on Amazon and it's uh, relatively well priced. For the ease of assembly and what you can do with it, I definitely agree. It was a fun project. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around. That is fun. Is my hair okay? Yeah, your hair looks better than mine at the moment, so. <laughs> okay.